Good morning, happy Sabbath. It's good to see everyone here. Um, and uh, we just want to welcome you to our church service today. And I uh, hope you are blessed and that you leave here uh, feeling a deeper connection with our Heavenly Father. Um, we have a few announcements. Um, our church school does a uh, citrus uh, fundraiser every time this year, and uh, my wife is in charge of that, and she said there's a couple boxes of uh, delicious oranges left if you um, are interested in that. Um, she's going to wave her hand over here and just hunt her down after church. And you can settle up later. It's a it's a donation for the um, our church school, and um, I can attest that the, both the the oranges and the grapefruit are delicious this year. Um, also, um, today is um, uh, my anniversary. I get to toot my own horn. I'm really grateful for my wife and um, our 26 years of marriage and. Um, just, uh, sh yes, she's been a huge blessing in my life. Um, that's all I can say about that. And um, also, today is a special day for our pastor. It's his birthday. So um, we're going we're gonna to call this his birthday party. We're going to have a virtual cake and candles here and... Uh, we need to sing happy birthday, says my mom. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Josh. Happy birthday to you. Amen. We appreciate you, Pastor. All right. So um, there's several prayer requests I know. We include those in our e-news. And um, one I want to especially lift up, the Lucas family. Um, uh, BJ, their, um, Diana's mother, is in the hospital, critically uh, ill right now. And we just want to lift her up in prayer. Um, Diana told me a neat story about BJ. I, I have a, um, I had a, I sent Diana a text just telling her I was praying for her mom, and I remember her mom used to tell awesome children's stories, and they'd be right up front here, and they always include a big board and felts, and uh, she would talk and talk, and at the time, I used to get a little frustrated because her children's stories were really long, <laughs> like a sermon, and we were like, oh, okay, we got other stuff on the program. And I was telling Diana, now in retrospect, it's one of my favorite things about her children's story. That sometimes the things that frustrate you in the moment end up ingraining that memory in your head and just uh, make you smile. So I smile when I think about her extremely long children's story. And, I, and when I sent that text to Diana, uh, she replied back that sh that was always BJ's love um, was children. And she would work really hard in the Sabbath school rooms to put up boards and felts and trellises and, and love that. And she also had an opportunity to serve at Monument Valley, um, Navajo Valley Mission. Adventists have a, a mission in, uh, for one of the Indian reservations, I think, in Utah. And she got to serve there for many, many years. And she had a tradition of feeding all the kids, and, including adults, after... Um, church sabbath am i getting this right bill <laughs> i see bill nodding um and uh and um she um fed all those people sabbath after sabbath and diana said that on that indian reservation she got the um got the name talking woman and it just hit home with me because i just remember her talking so much during that children's story and how much she talked and I even have a mother who talks a lot. I mean, if you ever go to Zoom Sabbath schools, um, my mom. It, but it's a spiritual gift, and it's what made BJ special, and I just think um, it's a neat thing to remember. All right, now, now i got to try to pray. 
<laughs> All right, let's bow our heads and let's thank the Lord for Sabbath. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Sabbath day and the chance we um, have to remember BJ and um, remember our pastor on his birthday and thank you for marriages. And um, we just ask that you be present in our service today and the music and um, we thank you for this special time of your Christmas when we can remember the most awesome gift of Jesus. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. y'all happy sabbath yeah so uh there's an interesting astronomical event coming up soon and i think that probably y'all be interested in hearing about it because it will be i'll say similar to maybe what uh the magi saw on the christmas star so on monday um the planet jupiter and saturn are going to be in conjunction so that means that they're really close together on the sky. And so uh, basically they're gonna be so close that you won't be able to tell them apart if your eyes aren't so great like mine. <laughs> and so uh, it'll be really cool. It'll look like the brightest star you've ever seen because Jupiter is, yeah, probably magnitude negative four, et cetera. So, okay, yeah, so it's gonna be really bright. So I'm gonna tell you some details and then uh, maybe you guys can, hopefully the weather turns out just fine and you can you can look at it so on Monday night right after sunset so sunsets at 5 30 5 36 and what you're going to do is look out at the western horizon so go out and look west and you'll look at the horizon and if you hold your hand out at arm's length it'll be about I don't know two hands maybe three uh, above the horizon and so you'll look out there and you'll see It'll be obvious. It'll be the brightest thing that, you've, that you can see. Um, so I just think it'd be interesting. The uh, planets every now and then come in conjunction, and they're not always so close. So um, the last time that Jupiter and Saturn were this close was m the morning of March 4th, 1226. Um, that was right when Notre Dame Cathedral was being built. So um, it's going to be interesting. I think maybe that'll give you a little taste of the Christmas star. I'm not assigning any meaning to it because that's not what we do. Um, but maybe that's similar to something they saw. So uh, I think that would be interesting. So um, at some point, hopefully, we'll maybe put something on the Facebook page because um, I want to try to get my telescope out and look at it because uh, it'll be interesting. You'll be able to see in the same telescope view both Jupiter and Saturn. So. Um, I've never seen that personally, and the next time this is going to happen is in like 100 years or something, so um, yeah, you're not going to see it again, so hopefully the weather is clear, and that's it. Is that, okay, thanks guys. Thank you, Jerry. want to uh, thank everybody for being here again and we've got a special service today uh, supposed to be a special guest speaker but uh, couldn't make it so after some convincing discussions by my lovely wife uh, y'all have me <laughs> so I just hope I can do justice here and uh, you know we can praise the Lord we're gonna have some uh, a special uh, reading and plenty of music to sing, familiar songs, and I'm not singing them by myself. I don't have an angelic voice yet. I'm not in heaven yet, so you don't want to hear me sing on earth. Amen. So I'm going to need plenty of help from everyone. You know, when we start singing, I'll have my daughters come up here to help out, and Josie's blessed us with uh, playing on the piano, and uh, I just hope everyone is richly blessed that's here and is watching online. 
and we just continue uh, praising God every day, every step we take. So I just want to start off with prayer before we open up in Luke 2 and uh, read his word. So let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this day and this time we come together and just to share and glorify. starts off, and it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria, so all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary. He, his betrothed wife who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swallowing clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see the saying that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. So, this morning I'd like to take a look at these passages that we just read in the light of hope incarnate. As we look and sing about the hope incarnate, may your minds be filled with the hope imminent. That is, the same Jesus that was born, lived, died, rose from the dead, and was taken away, will return. Hope incarnate, hope imminent. So we see that the world was working under the control of the Roman Empire. And note that this piece of history is important because we can determine the timing of Christ's birth. And since Joseph was the father of this young family to be, they had to return to his hometown, to the city of David, Bethlehem. And we're going to sing number 135 of the hymnal, O Little Town of Bethlehem. And we're going to sing verses 1, 3, and 4. And it'll be on the screen. Now.
Fisher with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in a swallowing cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. These verses give us a dark picture of the poverty in the world, that the monarch of the universe, the one who owns everything, is born in a barn, in a smelly, musty, stinky, dirty, dingy barn. But grasp the thought, just take, for example, like Bill Gates leaving behind all of his millions to be living with the utter poor that Mother Teresa served in her life. Take that concept and multiply it by a million. That is a God of love. That is a God incarnate. And we're going to sing Away in a Manger now. for 
stars are brightly shining It is the night of our dear Savior's birth Long lay the world in sin and ever me Till he appeared and the soul felt his word that they needed a salvation of another kind. Of course, a night was to be the night that changed their lives. Verse 9, Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a, a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So can you imagine the look of wonder, of terror, of excitement, of joy, and the expressions that they had on their faces? So let's sing angels we have heard on high. Verses 1 and 3. Too excited. 
Or this could be a hoax. Or I think it's too wise to leave the sheep. What happens if we lose them? There goes next month's rent. Or, well, this isn't a Sabbath, and I'm kind of busy right now. Or if it had been Sabbath morning, perhaps I would have done something about it. But I'm busy right now. No, no, no. They didn't do that. Those shepherds went as fast as they could to worship their Savior, their King. You can read that in verses 15 through 18. So it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. So now they surely had some doubt in their minds. The Messiah in swallowing clothes, lying in a manger? I won't believe it till I see it. And when they saw him, they wondered. And the girls are going to sing a, a special song. Here with us. That the hands of God could be so small. How tiny fingers reach in Jesus the Christ, born in Bethlehem, a baby born to save, to save the souls of men. Hallelujah, hallelujah, heaven's love reaching down to save the world.
After all this, can you imagine them quietly going back to their sheep? Making a pack of months of sales to never tell anyone what they had seen and experienced? No way. Just as they were told, they told others. Salvation had come to Israel. So let's sing. Go tell it on the mountain, as the shepherds did. Tell it on the mountain imitating, observing, pondering. Christ gave his life for you. No, he came into this world for you and me, and he hung on the cross for you and me. When we behold Jesus, we will have the same reaction as the shepherds, to go tell it on the mountain, in the home, in the office, in the park, at the gym, to your neighbors, to your children, to your parents, to your friends. And whoever you come across, every day, every breath, every step we take, is this, a, is this a secret to keep? No, it's not. Go and tell others that Jesus came to this earth and became our hope incarnate. God became man to save us from our sins and to declare us righteous. He lived a righteous life so that his righteousness would cover our unrighteousness. In other words, his success covers my failures. And we have all failed, haven't we? This child was and still is a hope for you and me. And is this the only hope that we have? Just to be made righteous? That is, a good, that is good. But what is that one hope that is burning in our hearts? Or at least it should be. Yes. We await Christ's return. The hope imminent. When I think of Christmas or Bethlehem in a manger, I think of the Jesus who will appear not in bands of clothes or swaddling cloths, but in the garment of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is coming. You know it. I know it. He's the only hope for America today, for the world today. He is the only one who will bring peace in Israel and Palestine, Iraq, India, Pakistan, Northern Ireland, all over the entire world. Only 
the Prince of Peace can bring this change before we kill ourselves. This is the true Christmas spirit. The same Jesus who promised to come as the Messiah will return. We're going to read in John 14, verses 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Hope incarnate, hope imminent. Rejoice this Christmas season because he came and he will come. Keep the spirit of Christmas alive this coming year and every day that we take, that we're blessed with. Live out hope incarnate, hope imminent. Live like you really believe Jesus came and live like he will come again. Don't be like others whose first thoughts this new year will be to go out and get the bargain prices for next year's gifts. No. Let us live like he is alive today and will come today. Hope incarnate, hope imminent. He came once right on time, he will come again. May we truly have the real Christmas spirit and soon our faith will become a reality as we see, see Jesus coming in the clouds of glory. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this hope that you give us, Lord. The hope that we read in your word, the hope of your first coming to bring salvation, Lord, to live and die on the cross for us, to take away our sins, to cleanse us of unrighteousness, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for the promise and the hope that you give us in your soon coming. Just give us the strength, the wisdom, the courage to wake up every morning that you bless us with, Lord, and to go out and to share this hope. Not just this time of year, Lord, but every day, every step we take, every breath we take, Lord, let it be for you. Let it be glorifying to your name and blessings upon your ears, Lord. For every soul that comes to you, Lord, all of heavens rejoice. And I ask, Lord, that the heavens are rejoicing every day, every second, Lord, that everyone's coming to you, Lord, receiving you in their hearts and just praising your name as the shepherds did to go out without haste and just go and share your name and your glory. I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being here and participating in this service. And I just ask that the Lord just bless each and every one as we live our lives for him. Have a blessed Sabbath.